How did you get started with this job, David, with the horns? Uh, it started off, uh, we are farmers by profession, really. Um, I didn't follow my brother's footstep uh, back home on the farm, but I still help quite a bit on due to the busy periods on the farm then. And then the odd ram would die on the land to get a few horns off there. And then it just started basically as a hobby. Quite luckily, uh, we got a local chap down the road, uh, an old chap down the road, he started us off. Uh, and then I met up with a chap from Yorkshire and spent quite a lot of time with him up in Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah, just the two things I was thinking of is where would you find the horns? It's easy to get one or two, like, but where would you get enough horns to keep you going? And then do you find lads then to give you a bit of a hand there to start, show you how to do it? Yeah, uh, getting quantity, I, I deal in horn as well as it happens. Uh, I import horn with a friend of mine from Scotland. We import buffalo horn into the country. And then with the ram's horn, uh, I used to buy them uh, around the markets and then mostly uh, out of the abattoirs. Uh, but since the BSE and the foot of mouth, uh, more stringent rulings in the abattoirs, it's getting more difficult yeah, all the time. Getting all fussy about it. And you need, you need an old ram's horn too, a young ram won't do, will you? No, it's got to be at least four to five years of age. Uh, yeah. It matures similar to a tree as yeah, such. Uh, it grows, the wall grows thicker as it gets older, uh, so the older the better for us. Aye. Aye. And, uh, and how did you find out, how did you get started? Because I have a vague idea how it works there with clamps and boiling and all this kind of crack. Yeah, I was quite lucky. I met up uh, an old shepherd up uh, in Whitby, North Yorkshire. Uh, he passed away uh, about 12 months ago, 12 or 18 months ago. Uh, he was in his 90s when he passed away, uh, but I spent a lot of time up with him. I learnt all, basically, the basics of stick making from him. Uh, he was a traditionalist. Uh, he knew the old ways of doing things, but then we had to adopt, basically, modern methods to do things as well, because as horn matures, uh, the rams these days go into the abattoir at a much younger age than what yeah, they used yeah. to. Uh, we used to uh, get them, you know, straight from the farms for, uh, years ago, uh, where they would die on the on the land, so they would be possibly up to ten years of age then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but now, because they're going in younger into the abattoirs, uh, we had to alter the system. And when you look around the workshop, uh, we've got a lot of presses and stuff yes. around the workshop. Uh, so that's basically to contract the horn. Uh, you can heat it and manipulate it. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Move it as you wish then. So you you use a bit of a mixture. He's certainly going back far enough with, with his 90 years experience anyway, that's the old ways. And so you use a bit of his stuff and then some new, our newer yeah. machinery, I see it around here. Now. Yeah, mod modern, modern ways uh, has come into it. Uh, I wanted to develop a system uh, that I could do a stick that was afford affordable to a customer as well. Uh, because they are quite time consuming, it's all hand work really. Well that's it, I mean, sure, I, I'm a cabinet maker and, and I have a few other rounds around the place, but when I think about the amount of work in it, I'd sooner just go and buy a nice horn rather than be going and experiment. How many hours are going into a handle? Like? Uh, plain stick can, well, anything up to about five days in a plain stick. Carved work then, if you're carving a border collie in the front end, can be anything up to ten days of work in it. Oh, yeah, God, yeah, yeah. And that's for a fellow who knows what he's doing. Yeah, as you, <laughs> as you say, yeah. I've had a few years' experience behind me by now. And... and you make other stuff too. Did I see you making whistles? And yeah, making a lot of whistles. Uh, I started off, uh, a friend of mine from the village here has a penny. Uh, he started me off on the whistle work. Uh, there was nobody doing horn whistles on the market, uh, so we decided to produce them in horn. Uh, but then uh, last year we brought out a new range of whistles. Uh, I've done some out of uh, mineralized polymer. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, Sophie Holt uh, and uh, Shirley Cropper, uh, they started selling them on my behalf. Oh, uh, very good. Yeah. Yeah, that's the next thing I was going to ask you is how do people get in touch with you? Like, you're, you're here full time, are you? Maybe yeah, you the workshop full time. Uh, don't help as much on the farm now as what I used to. I used to do a bit of shepherding as well with my brother yeah. on the farm, but it's gone so busy in the workshop. I've got about 18 months' work uh, on oh, my works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so... And do, do people find you don't have your website, or how do they, they hear about no, you? No, no website at all. Um, I, I've uh, basically got a few, um, just a few uh, pieces on websites of other people's websites then, uh, but it's just been word of mouth to start off with. Mm. Uh, but I must put now a link on my website. I was talking the other day there, and there's a Belgian fella here getting a couple of sticks from you. But... Uh, but the Americans and all, do you send them out to America or how do you get them to them? 
America is a difficult country to send sticks, to post sticks out because it's so expensive to post them. Uh, there's restriction on length as well with them oh, yeah. uh, in their country, so they're fairly short in length as such. Uh, so it is quite difficult. Uh, that's one reason why you've called here tonight because yeah. you've got to stick to take on my behalf out of America. Uh, I just, we came to realize that you were judging in America in August, uh, so one yeah. of the girls there wanted to stick over. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we thought, yeah. The only thing is, it's easier than taking a pope anyway. Huh? Yeah, I <laughs> think it is. <laughs> less, less restrictions yeah. anyway. So they yeah. won't dirty the graves. Yeah. Uh, so no, it's it's fun time really. I enjoy it. Uh, I've got two lassies now coming from Slovakia uh, in about a week's time. They want to do their own sticks. Oh, uh, yeah, brilliant. You want yeah. to give them a, a, a hand of a tuition. Uh, they want to start with wooden sticks rather than horn work. Yes. Uh, they think they won't have the ability back in Slovakia um, and possibly not enough horns oh, back in Slovakia. Horns. Yeah, I yeah. should think possibly they get horns, but uh, the difficulty um, more than anything is they're young girls. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on your body, in a sense, uh, when you're using all these presses. Oh, yeah. uh, it's under hydraulic pressure all the time. Uh, but they think it's going to be hard work uh, for what they want to do. So we'll start them off with wooden sticks. Uh, they come in and stop in the area now next week and they're going to call in. Uh, had a chat with a girl from Finland. Uh, I was up in a trial uh, about two weeks ago and there's a girl from Finland there. And she's coming down to Brecon uh, in about two weeks' time. So she's calling in again to see us. Uh, so we basically sell all over the world, really. Gone. Isn't it amazing, though? The social media, that's what it really is. Like, like uh, The reason I'm here is because a lady in America bought a stick from you. And now I have the, the, the luck to come and meet you here. And uh, in fairness, uh, Dad was not too worried about time. It's half 11 now. And he said, don't worry about that, buddy. Come on. <laughs> Any any PI exercises? If I can get anything out of out of it, at my point, I don't know what time of night it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're the same in that anyway. But come here, we'll have a look at some of the arms anyway. Yeah.